When I was in school at UC Santa Cruz, a friend of mine who was a surfer, um, he introduced the, the brew to me, gave me a bottle of it, and it was, uh, I hated it, hated it. Um, the second time I had his kombucha, I fell in love with it. I was drinking like four bottles a day. The kombucha, it was a huge study aid for me, and it would curb my appetite. So I was bringing it to the library with me, and I could drink a bottle of it, and I could go hours and have laser focus. And my friend Alex, he was moving into town, and so uh, I told him about kombucha and I, how I'd started drinking it. And around that time, um, our friend Molly had just gotten back from her trip in Spain. I had no idea how to make kombucha, and I was telling her about it. She's like, I know how to make kombucha. So me, Molly, and Alex, we made our first batch of kombucha in our, my kitchen at home, um, and we put it on the counter, and it was horrible. It was the, the worst thing. I'd ever had. We had kind of immersed ourselves in all these YouTube videos. We started in one gallon glass containers and then we found these 20 liter, just over five gallon glass pickle jars. And we moved into our garage. Uh, we had this little fermentation chamber that we had built. I learned from my neighbor who was a beer maker. And it was a little lizard ceramic heat lamp on a little thermostat. And we recognized that, wow, with this temperature control and with you know, consistent inputs on our sugar and from the tea side, well, we can make a pretty decent beverage. I had never heard of kombucha, and Mike had this weird fermentation business out of the garage. Finally, one day, he took me over there and gave me a taste of it, and I actually loved it from the first taste. I thought, wow, this stuff is really delicious. He's telling me about the health benefits, how it's probiotic, which I wasn't super familiar with. We stayed in the garage for quite a long time, and we actually sold our very first keg while, when we were still in the garage. Um, and we sold that to a place called Bliss Cafe. And we're telling David, the owner, over and over, and he's like, you guys, you're, you're t all this talk, but you're not producing anything. Let's, let's get something in here. And I was like, well, we can't. It's not perfect. Like, we're still trying to perfect it. He's like, stop. You just have to put it out there. People are going to love it. You're going to improve upon it. Take the feedback. So I went back that day and found the most readily available kombucha in one of our fermenters and brought him a keg of ginger sarsaparilla the next day. Around that time is when we got more legit. We moved into a commissary kitchen, um, a little shared space, um, and that's when Jake came on board. I just finished my MBA, so I was very fired up about entrepreneurship, and uh, we started kind of dreaming together about how we could grow a business. and and do something that was uh, providing something good for the community that we could be proud of and, and grow and, and work for ourselves at the same time. We started diving into it head first. You know, we'd come home from our day jobs, we'd go climb at the climbing gym, and then we'd get a brew done of kombucha. So it was very synergistic to our, our lifestyles, and you know, we were drinking it every day and, and felt great. still just selling in a couple places locally. Mike was even driving kegs around on his bicycle to deliver them. I'd kickstand my bike up. I'd load one on one side and while holding the bike up, I'd lift one of the other kegs and throw it in the other side. Each keg is about 65 pounds. It was kind of scary to be honest. Like, it, it was definitely a sight to see. The owner of the commissary kitchen that we were renting out he gave us a month or a month and a half notice, but we needed to leave the commissary kitchen. He actually told us in what was a pretty foundational speech, he told us this was your internship and now you're gonna join the real world and kind of grow up as a business. So we sat down and sort of thought to ourselves, where are we gonna take this? We're selling in two cafes right now. This business is not sustainable in the sense that it can't support us as a full-time job. It's basically a hobby, not a business at this point. So we decided that we wanted to go for it. We got some money together and we got uh, the first warehouse that we're actually in right now and started fermenting in slightly larger batches and kind of going from there. And we just learned as much as we can, soaked it up and uh, just, just kept the ball rolling. Right now we are just measuring out our total weight of the black tea that we put into our concentrate for our initial brew. This is essentially going to be hot steeped at 
brew point for black teas and then add it in with our seed, our sugar, and our water. Green tea, as we've seen, it tends to be a little cleaner on the tail end of fermentation, a bit lighter in body and in flavor. I grew up drinking soda as a kid, so there was certainly the appeal of a flavored beverage that wasn't water. I love the carbonation, I love the, the tart. A variation on tea that kind of extended on a naturalized soda that you just kind of love. Right now I am beginning the black tea steep, so I'm just essentially kind of just muddling our open, open end tea bag here. It's the same thing you do with a tea bag back home. You know. Steep time is, is about 15 minutes. A lot of our flavors are inspired by what other people bring to us. This guy Paul, he had an idea for a flavor called mango coconut cayenne. You know, this crazy flavor which we've made and it's a fantastic flavor. We're totally comfortable taking something that someone has said, hey, I, I would love it if you guys tried this out and do it. Of course we are testing, tasting every single batch and making sure it's something that we want to drink uh, every day and, and we want to be able to put down a 16 ounce pint and say, wow, that was really good. I could even go for another one. At first, the decision for us to be in kegs was one of practicality. We didn't have the space or the equipment or the knowledge to be able to like do a bottling line and do it effectively. However, as we moved on in the business, we sort of discovered what we were passionate about and what we wanted our business to stand for. And one of those main qualities is sustainability and support for the environment. We're using stainless steel kegs and we're using glass growlers and both of those things they can be reused hundreds or even thousands of times. So for the foreseeable future that's going to be our kind of the business model. The first batch yeah it was bad it wasn't horrible. What we realized what that was vital was the amount of starter that we were putting into the batch and the starter is the basically taking some of the previous batch of kombucha. That's where all the biodiversity is. So the more starter we would put in, it would ferment really fast, but maybe it would get too sour. If we put in a small amount, it would take a really long time, and it would maybe create an imbalance in the flavor profile. Um, and our kombucha is primarily uh, Britannomyces, is the wild yeast strain in there, and Acetobacter, so acetic acid-forming bacteria. Um, there's also some Gluconobacter in there, and that's what's doing the fermentation and creating that tart flavor. So it's having the right amount of those little critters in there doing their work. And so what we were looking for in that flavor profile is it's a triangle. So one point in the triangle is sweetness, dryness, and tartness or sourness. And so the ideal flavor profile is right in the center of that triangle. It's an even amount of all those things. Jake and I have trained our palates to, to taste for those things and that's what we're striving for. We're striving for a very bold kombucha, yet a very balanced kombucha. We feel like we'll be doing some good in the world if people who otherwise would have gotten iced tea, energy drinks, high sugar, sodas, if they're choosing kombucha instead and making healthy choices, getting their daily dose of probiotics, we'll feel like we've, we've done a good thing here. So, um, we try to create a very approachable, um, sessionable kombucha that you can drink, you can put down a whole pint and still want some more. We want to open people's eyes to the idea of wild fermentation. So, you know, if you try our kombucha and you like it, like we encourage you to try all the different kombuchas that are out there. And, um, you know, hopefully that leads to you making healthier decisions, eating other probiotic uh, rich foods like, you know, uh, sauerkrauts or kimchi or you know, we have a friend that makes a, a beautiful uh, organic vegan uh, coconut yogurt. So uh, there's a world of fermentation that we've kind of lost and we really want to be on the forefront of bringing that world of fermentation back to um, our community. <laughs>